If you're not betting Asian baseball, you just don't like money. I mean, that's the reality of it when we got NFL in full swing, MLB still going on, NHL right around the corner. You think the odds makers are focusing on KBO and NPB? You're kidding yourself. We got two of the best experts bringing you winners today. Tokyo Brandon right out of the gate here. Brandon, let's take a look at my first true love in Asian baseball. That's the KBO. You got the NC Dinos taking on the Kiwoom Heroes. How are you looking to bet this one? Yeah, it's one of those rare cases where I'm not talking about your SSG Landers. Yeah. However, <laughs> this is a good one. Um, <laughs> Ridiculous. The lines are not out yet. But I have found on some of the less, uh, or shall I say, the more unsavory books that this is going to come out at NC minus about 185, uh, which is not really a bettable uh, situation. Uh, the reason I like NC here is I want to break down the starting pitchers. We've got Tanner Tully uh, for NC and Ariel Gerardo for Kiwoom. Now, these are two pitchers who were actually not even on the teams when the season started, but due to injuries and uh, the real starters getting injured, these guys were kind of added later in the season, but they've turned out to be two of the best pitchers in the KBO, especially Tanner Tully. Tanner Tully has been amazing. How amazing has he been? Well, this is his first season and he's had six starts, but he has a 0 99 whip and a 248 ERA in the KBO that's incredible cuz in the KBO we're having game scores of 9.1 uh, I think the average is about 9.1 between 9.1 and 9.3 per game so if you can get a starting pitcher in there with a 099 whip uh, and an ERA under 3 you're really doing something NC has the better lineup uh the better runs per game on the season the better runs per game the last 10 days uh, they're a little bit cold right now, but what I really like about this matchup is not only the starting pitching, but the bullpens. NC's bullpen, I have them ranked third out of 10 teams, where I have Kiwum's bullpen ranked nine out of 10 teams. Uh, I really like NC's bullpen. I like their starting pitching. The hitting, they do have better hitters than Kiwum, uh, but uh, they're a little cold right now. Uh, Gerardo is a good pitcher, and I think... The beginning, probably the first five innings of this game will be very slow. It might be one to nothing, might be like a two to one kind of game. But I think in the end, NC will finally exploit Kiwum's poor, poor bullpen. And Gerardo doesn't really go late into games. So I think we will see a little bit of exposure here by Kiwum's bullpen. Kiwum is the new Hama. Uh, as we did our Asian baseball show last year, Dan, you will remember that Hama was the downtrodden uh seller dweller the entire season uh that's kiwum now the kiwum used to be mediocre at everything but now they're bad at everything they have the fourth worst lineup in the kbo and they have the third worst uh rotation and they have the second worst bullpen so they're pretty much bad at everything they're just a bad team nc needs a win they have the better starter they have the better bullpen they do have the better lineup, even though it's cold. I think they'll catch a little bit of fire here, especially at the end of the game. I like NC. I don't like them at minus 180, though. So what you can do is take a minus one or a minus one and a half. NC's on the road here, so a minus one and a half would be a safe bet on the run line. Uh, or a minus one, probably knock it down to about minus 160. If you don't want to digest a minus 160... Uh, I imagine the run line minus one and a half will be right around minus 120, which is a very palpable uh, line. So go with NC today. Going with NC, the Dinos, says our man, at Tokyo Brandon. All right, Brandon, I'm going to test my memory here because my notes here for the NPB game we have to break down doesn't have the team names, doesn't have any more information. So let's see if I remember. The Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks taking on the Lotte Marines. Am I right there, Brandon? And if so, how are very we Very nice. And the pronunciation, very nice. <laughs> I learned from you, know, you my you, friend. Thank you. Yeah, you could you could pronounce it uh, poorly, but uh, that's not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, yeah, we do. We do. <laughs> Japanese, uh, I won't get into it, but Japanese vowels are pronounced just like Spanish. So it's a e u a o, and that's it. In English, my brain you know, already hurts. Yeah, in English, A has four different sounds, but in Japanese, 
A only is ah. So that's your Japanese hooked on phonics today. with Tokyo Brandon here on Wager Talk. <laughs> that's your Jap- I love it. If you want to learn Japanese? Hey, hit me up in my DMs, baby. Just kidding. So uh, here we go. <laughs> Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks taking on the Chiba Lotte Marines. Um, Lotte Marines are the second in second place here, and uh, the Hawks are uh, the uh current champions of the pacific league but they have fallen down this season they this is one of those teams that has a really great lineup but they just can't perform they're kind of like the red Sox, i guess really good batters but they're just not winning for some odd reason they just can't get it together Uh, but i think they get it together in this one so um i don't know if any of you remember uh koji arihara he he played for the rangers i think last year or the year before, um, wasn't very good in Major League Baseball, but he was really good in Japan. And this season, he's having a really good season as well. Uh, Arihara it has a 2-4-3 ERA. He's got a really nice whip. And he has a 1-8-8 ERA against the Marines in two starts and a 2-0 and record. Uh, he did have one blow-up game, which he does tend to have sometimes. He gave up eight smackers in six innings to Oryx, but Oryx, Oryx has the best lineup in the Pacific League. Uh, they've won the Pacific League three years in a row, so they have a really good lineup. Lotte's lineup, not quite as challenging. Uh, in his last three starts, if you throw out that one clunker, uh, he's given up three, zero, and three. So he's not the best pitcher in the world, uh, but he is good against Lotte. And I do like the SoftBank, uh, the SoftBank bullpen, pretty darn good. I think the bullpen's going to be the difference in this game. Uh, Lotte is starting a pitcher named uh, Taneichi. Taneichi, not the best pitcher. Decent numbers on the season, but he's horrible against SoftBank. Uh, his last four starts gave up two, one, four, one. Uh, so I think the first five innings might be a bit of a tight struggle here, but. Lotte's bullpen is the second worst in Japan. They're just so bad. As a matter of fact, they were beating Oryx uh, about six hours ago. They were beating Oryx, and then their bullpen came in and gave up six runs in the last three innings. They blew the game again. Uh, They got a decent lineup. But I like SoftBank here. SoftBank needs a win. Uh, We're getting down to crunch time here. There's 10 games left in the season. Uh, Playoff position. uh, You got to get into third place to, to make the playoffs in your division. Uh, out of a six-team division, Uh, and SoftBank is teetering on the brink of losing their playoff spot. They need a win here. Uh, They have the better starting pitcher, but what I really like about them is they have the better bullpen here. Uh, Numbers are not out yet, uh, but I imagine SoftBank will probably be about a minus 130 to a minus 135 favorite. I would take that. Anything minus 140 or better, I would take SoftBank on the money line here. And as I've touted in many shows before, uh, a minus one is always a safe option to knock off about 40 cents of juice uh, and still not lose if your team wins. What I hate about the run lines the most is if you take a run line and your team wins by one, you still lose your bet. With a minus one, if your team wins by one, it's a push. It's not uh, quite as uh, agonizing uh, as a run line. So uh, I would take SoftBank on the money line here or the minus one. Let me just throw this in. I am 12 and two, including my Asian baseball mm. plays the last the last two days, 12 and two. I'm on a 12 and two run. I have $9 Asian baseball plays almost every day. And, and I have a 4% best bet in MLB today. So go to my page at wagerstock.com, grab one of those. Uh, and when the SoftBank line comes out, I would uh, play the Hawks tonight. Tokyo, Brandon, so good. He'll have you speak in Japanese. That's the breakdown there <laughs> from a man, TB. Appreciate you, brother. Check him out over at wagertalk.com. And if you are betting Asian baseball, hop below in the comments and let us know if you agree or disagree. We're going to step aside, and don't worry, we got Adam Trigger coming by, giving you some KBO action to end the show. If you like the content, make sure you hit that like button and hit subscribe We got it coming to you all year long here on Wager Talk Extra. So don't go anywhere. Hit that little bell. 
So from NPB, we'll swing right on back into KBO and welcome in the man Adam Trigger to be talking some Kia Han with some Lotte KT Trig. I say we get right into it and you got a breakdown as lines are starting to creep out in this Kia and Hanwa matchup. How are you looking to bet this one? Yeah, Dan. So I had a 4% play last night on Hanwa that got rained out along with the rest of the league. Um, but I'm still looking to come back and, and play Hanwa here. So you mentioned lines just starting to pop as we're filming this. I'm seeing Hanwa plus one and a half in the minus 125 to minus 130 range. If that line holds, I'll definitely probably jump in with a client play. And I'll tweet this out. So make sure you're following me on Twitter at Top Flight, uh, at Top Flight SI because I will confirm whether this is going to you know make my client card or not. I guess my, my motive here, a couple things. One. The Kia Tigers are, uh, they, they, they've just gotten absolutely crippled with injuries over the past month. It, it, they now found out yesterday that Sung Bum Na, one of the best hitter, hitters in the history of this league, and, and sort of one of the veteran sluggers in the league, and, and arguably the heart and soul of that Kia lineup, is now done for the year. So they're going to be without him. And, and it's just been sort of a brutal run for Kia. Um, you know, they've, they've been dealing with pitchers being hurt. And so now to have Na go down, it's just a tough blow for them. And and it's reflected in their standings. They've lost six straight games. They've now fallen out of the uh, the sort of playoff hunt, if you will. Um, and, and it's just, you know, it, they're having a hard time overcoming injury, which is basically going to be the same thing for any team in the KBL. That's one thing we talk about year in and year out. These teams are not deep like MLB teams. If they get hit with cluster injuries all at the same time, it's almost always a, a dip in in sort of results. And so it's not surprising to see, see Kia suddenly losing games. Uh, but what does also happen is it takes the book some time to catch up here. And I think that's why you're getting such a playable price on Hanwa plus one and a half on their home field. So if, if one were to just go look at the KBO standings right now, you'd see Hanwa 51 and 67 with six draws. They are 10 games out of the last playoff spot and you know one would i one would probably say you know what this eagles team doesn't have a whole lot to play for but that's not really true because hanwa has finished last in this league the last couple of years i know that like it's a huge deal that they might finish eighth and out of the bottom and it would be an even bigger deal if they could somehow catch lote and finish in seventh so whereas like your typical sort of eighth place team with very little playoff aspirations might not, you know, kind of show up for a game in September with only a couple weeks of the season left. That's not the case for Hanwa, who could have their best finish in a couple of years. Another reason I think Hanwa might really show up for this game at home is they've only got Si Juan Ro, who's who's become one of the top players in the league for another couple games because he's going to leave the team to go represent Team Korea in the Asian Games, as will players around the league. But he's kind of like the 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 sort of superstar under 25 player that's going to leave so he's only got a couple games left in kbo for this season and i do think that you know they'll kind of rally around that and want to win some of these last home games while he's still in the lineup hanwa did get um uh che back the other day they're sort of veteran dh who came over from lg that's a big component of the lineup he had a two-run home run uh in the game on monday against ssg and you know the day off really helps Hanwa just as much as it helps Kia here because Hanwa had played doubleheader over the weekend. They had to play on Monday. So they were running out of bullpen arms and now they're going to have their full complement of relievers behind Felix Pena, who's their best pitcher. And he's having another fantastic season in this league. Yuli Lee gets the ball for Kia. He's been shaky. He's only pitched once since August 22nd. It was, you know, he's been hurt. He's been on the IL with fatigue type, uh, type in, you know, issues. And in that start, he gave up four runs in three innings, two home runs. He's been pretty shaky. So uh, I think if you add it all up here, I think there's some serious value catching a run and a half at home with Hanwa. And, and again, like a, as an underdog, there's good value on plus money on Hanwa. But, it, you know, just knowing the way Hanwa sort of, you know, plays in a lot of close games, tends to lose some close games. I think I'd prefer to have the plus one and a half in my pocket here, Dan. So that's the way I'm looking at this one. Hanwa plus one and a half. I think there's a lot of value in getting that free run in a game that um, that Hanwa mm -hmm. could very well win. 
Absolutely. So even in Asian baseball, I love it when you find a way for some dog plays here. That's my man, Adam Trigger. Check him out. WT.buzz slash AT. All right, Trig, Lote and KT. It's funny. Brandon was talking about Lote in the NPB, but we're talking KBO here. How are you looking to bet this one, brother? Yeah, so I got to be honest. I I thought... I was going to get a better line here with Lote. Mm -hmm. But remember, when we're recording this, guys, we're referencing these lines are just coming out and they could move. So uh, I I like the spot for Lote for a couple of reasons. And, and I just want to kind of make a point here. Lote is not a team that I'm probably going to look at to bet on very often down the stretch. I think that they're kind of fizzling out of the, the playoff race. So just for some context here, the Lote Giants have been right in the mix this whole season. They're probably the, the the one team that's still kind of like of the bottom teams that's still got a shot here. So coming into play today, uh, they're five and a half games back of SSG for the final playoff spot. There's still a couple weeks left in the season. I mean, that's, you know, that's doable, um, you know, in terms of, of how many games there are still to play. But the problem with Lote is, you know, their, their pitching is very thin. They've lost some players and, and their bullpen specifically it just is it has been terrible they've had to bad they've had to deal with injuries they have the worst bullpen in the league right now i would say like collectively definitely on the road they have a, a league worst um you know bullpen era on the road now they get a big time reprieve with the rain out yesterday because they were going to i was going to bet against lote with hanwa yesterday a big reason for that is i felt like lote was coming into that game with with virtually no relief pitching but the rain saves them, Dan, and they get an extra day, um, which is, is kind of huge because they just got their closer back. It gives them some semblance of a bullpen heading into this game. Their starter here, Gin An Na, it has been one of the better young starters in the league. And he battled injury for a period of time. But since he sort of have come back from his injury, they've been running him out there for, you know, his pitch counts the last few games have been out of control. 122, 115, um, 108. They're really kind of pushing him out there to go the, as long as he possibly can. And, of course, he gets a day off here coming into this start, which which is, is helpful for him, in my opinion. KT is in an interesting position here because he's battled all the way back to become the second seed right now. And it is a big deal for them to hold on to that number two seed. But... Over the weekend, LG rattled off five straight wins. No one's going to catch the LG Twins for that top spot. So I have to wonder, like, if KT has a little bit of an exhale here. They still need to hold off the NC Dinos for the three seed, but Doosan's probably not going to catch them. So, you know, they know they're going to finish second or third, and I have to wonder if they just kind of, like, take a collective exhale because KT also had a ton of games over the weekend has been burning through bullpen guys left and right. And they just, you know, this this would be the spot where they might come out and, and maybe go through the motions a little bit. And it's also the spot where there's there's the one KT pitcher that I've kind of wanted to play against all season in Jason Bay, who who I think is is just far sort of worse than his like um high level metrics would indicate. So you usually get a good number going against KT when Bay is on the mound. That's why I was really surprised when when a certain book opened this like low tay like right around even money i thought we would get some plus money there so dan what i'm going to do is wait watch this line throughout the day see if kt gets bet because if kt starts to take a bunch of money here and all of a sudden we're getting a really good price on low tay i might have to jump in for for no reason other than this is low tay season this game i mean if they don't win this game there's no way that they're going to be able to hang around in the wild card race and after an off day and knowing they got a couple bullpen guys back, I have to imagine that they're going to manage it as such, where you're just going to see Lote kind of run uh, um, run Na out there for as many pitches as they can and then use their top bullpen guys in, you know, in an attempt to try to get a win uh, to stay in that wild card race for that final spot. So I'll look Lote here. Again, I don't know if we're going to get the playable number, but I'll certainly, you know, I'm going to certainly watch how this line moves throughout the day uh, because if KT does take the money, I think they might, since they've been a very sort of popular team to bet on, uh, we might have a good, there might be a price point, Dan, where we can kind of jump in with Lote at a really good mm -hmm. price. 
Yeah, love the breakdown there from our man Adam Trigger and also love what he's been doing in college football. He's got a 4% noon Big 12 best bet and noon college football. Been very kind to Adam Trigger and his clients. Check it out over at his page. But before you do that, throw this guy a like and hit subscribe so you never miss any of the shows here. You can catch him every Wednesday on The Hustle and nearly daily in the Hustle mini apps that they do as well, getting you actionable info each and every day. So more reasons than ever to subscribe here at Wager Talk TV. Big thanks to Adam Trigger. Big thanks to Tokyo Brandon. We'll be back tomorrow with a little combat sports edition of Wager Talk Extra. So we'll see you then. Best of luck.